Yeah, that's right, everybody. It's another episode of Nothing But Netflix. I'm not Rob Zesternino. I'm still Josh Wiggler, joined here by a man who I shall henceforth refer to as the Lord Chappelle. <laughs> I'm somewhat of an alien, Josh. I guess I could take that. I don't know. I, I don't know. It seems like we're all fighting for that title now. You know, the Lord is fighting for it, but the yeah. aliens are now me. Yeah, you are at least the lord of nothing but Netflix, if nothing. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, that's 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 not Listen, awful. Rob's not here, so obviously yeah, I gotta right. suck up to you. Uh, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm in yeah. charge. Uh, yeah, send me your nanotechnology. We're gonna send Chappelle all of our nanotechnology. This mm -hmm. is our second podcast about the three count them three body problem, or as they say in New England, the three body problem. Uh, Chappelle, this time we are talking all spoilers all the all time. Spoilers. We watched the whole thing. We saw every episode of the three body problem. We watched none of the 30 episodes of the Chinese version of the three body problem, which is streaming on Peacock. Correct. Correct. None of that. But Josh, we had a three body problem and now we don't because we have a third body. We are very excited that we do indeed have a third body. This is not quite the Nothing But Netflix 5, but the Nothing But Netflix 3 today, as we are going to bring in a third body to solve this problem, having watched every single episode of Three Body Problem as well. Joining us, uh, the person in the entirety of the RHAP ecosystem that I would most likely vote to be our wall facer. It is the great professor Christian Hubicki himself. Christian, how's it going? No doubt. Doing great. It's awesome to be here. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Chappelle. I, I, I once I saw that this show, what this was about, I figured this, if I'm gonna podcast about one Netflix show, I think this is this is my call. Is that a rule? I, I, Chappelle, do you have a rule that Christian can only come on to this podcast once? No, 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 no. If Mr. Robot is ever on Netflix, he has to come talk about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I, but oh, I, I can say it's a little close to home with the, with 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 the robots. You know, I, I try yeah. to, I try to leave work at work. You know, and fail to do so. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, but no, but it was but this kind of sci fi show. I'm really thrilled to talk about this with you all. I mean, I in fact have avoided other people's opinions on the show explicitly, so that way I could dump them all here uh, unbiased with you all and and see and, and get your opinions too. Amazing. Okay, so we've got three bodies to solve the three body problem. Of course, it's nothing but Netflix. You can listen to the podcast on the nothing but Netflix podcast feed whenever you search for nothing but Netflix on your podcast players of choice. You also may be experiencing this podcast in a couple of different other areas. We are on YouTube for this video for this episode of nothing but Netflix. So if you go to the RHAP YouTube page, you will see me. You'll see Chappelle. You'll see Christian. You won't see the aliens that are invisible but spying on us and hearing every single word of every single sentence that we say. But they are here, I promise you. So check us out, Nothing But Netflix, on YouTube. Um, we're also additionally posting this episode of Nothing But Netflix, Chappelle, in the post-show recaps main feed because, okay. as some of you may know, post-show recaps Coming to an end uh, very, very soon. March 31st is the end of post-show recaps. We have a couple of episodes coming on the other side of that, but then we are wrapped on PSR. But the scripted TV podcasting continues, and there will be other venues in which to enjoy many of the voices that you enjoyed on post-show recaps, including here on Nothing But Netflix. There's going to be much more scripted content. Uh, I'm going to be hanging out with Chappelle here for a bit, so if you want to hear my TV takes, this is probably the place for you to check out. So we want to make sure that everybody in the post-show recaps feed knows that nothing but netflix is happening uh if you're like hey where are my three body problem podcasts and the the like hey, check out this feed maybe it's got them uh and stay subscri subscribed to that poster recaps main feed as well you never know what that's gonna turn into someday uh all of that being said Chappelle, you and i talked about the first two episodes of three body problem at that point i think christian you had already watched the whole show you watched it pretty quickly after it had come out right yeah, that, that's right. Uh, well, I didn't intend to. Like, I knew vaguely that the show was coming on Netflix, but it wasn't something I was hotly anticipating. And then last Sunday, I just kind of woke up and I just read uh, your, your news from your old stopping grounds, Hollywood Reporter, yes. and they were and and they and there was an article about it, and I and I just saw the the description, the synopsis that it's that it's humans preparing for an impending alien invasion. I'm like, that's pretty. 
that's pretty interesting. I yeah. that just hit me right at that moment. And I, said, I turned to Emily. I was like, "Do you want to? Do you want to watch this show?" And she's like, "She knew a little bit about it. She was she knew more about it than I did." Yeah. And she's like, "Oh yeah, it's about physicists." Um. Uh. And and I was like, "Oh really?" And and for those who don't know, um, my my background is I'm a professor. I'm actually a research active faculty. Um. And now, as of now, a tenured research. Hey, active faculty. hey so tenured. congratulations! Thank you very much. And, and I work in robotics and mechanic, my PhD is in robotics and mechanical engineering. I run a research lab. And so once I learned it's kind of research focused, so that's a big, uh, that's a big aspect of the show. I was like, I should check out the show. And we watched, I'd say the first five episodes the first day. And then we came back the next oh, wow. day and finished up the last three, uh, which I think shaped a lot of my experience in watching the show, but we'll get into that as we get into the whole show in general. Yeah, I'm curious, Chappelle, about your experience, because we have at least the same start uh, where we watched the first two episodes. And then I would say, like, you know, we were like, OK, they're dehydrating and rehydrating folks. And this is pretty weird. And there's some stuff that's happening on the show. This countdown is freaking me out. Uh, but we'll see. You know, uh, we'll see what's on the other side. I'm sure we'll get to the end of the season and be like, oh, Samuel Tarly, who? This Jack Rooney guy is my new favorite TV character. All sorts of things when we were young babes on the other side of uh, the first two episodes of this show. Having watched the rest of it, did it trend up or down for you, Chappelle, the three-body problem? Okay, so our opinion, our thoughts about the show, everything basically from the first episode of our two-part coverage uh, was basically wrong or just like irrelevant. We were really talking about this video game aspect. We're like, oh yeah, how many levels is this? And I, I think by the end, it's like all that stuff is goes to the wayside because um, I did not know this was about aliens. So when I started it, I had no clue what was going on throughout the first two episodes. I was like, okay, aliens, video game, it's all aligned somewhere. And then... As the show moved further away from the video games, it got better and better and better and better. I mean, last night I was watching it and I legit looked around the room to see if anybody else was watching it. We're like, y'all see this? This is amazing. Y'all yeah. y'all, y'all aren't, aren't keeping up with this? Because by episode eight, I was on the edge of my seat. I was emotionally invested with a lot of these people who I didn't care about like two episodes prior. It was really, really good to me. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I haven't looked at any of the discourse online. I know there was a strong book community because the people read the books and they felt very strongly about this. I don't know what they're saying, but for me, somebody who has not done that research, I thought I gave it two thumbs up. Yeah, I didn't do the research until after I watched the show. I wanted to make sure that my experience with the show was one thing, and then I would read about it after the fact. It sounds like they, uh, you know, took some real swings in the adaptation process that. This is unlike Game of Thrones. So David Benioff and, and D.B. Weiss, who are the co-creators of this show, alongside Alexander Wu, who did a season of The Terror, which is pretty good. First season of The Terror is the best. You should check out The Terror if you've never seen The Terror before. Uh, the, the first, you know, the first run at a big book TV adaptation, a little show called Game of Thrones. Do you ever watch that one, Christian? Did you uh, to tune into the GOT? Is it like down with GOT? Chairs? Is yeah, that, is that, that what that that what that's like? Yes, yeah, that no, one I, is yeah. the one where if they don't sit in the throne, they get their heads cut off. That okay, yeah. I, oh, you know what? I did see yeah. that. I forgot about that one. You no, know, I enjoyed Game of Thrones a lot. Uh, they had a three dragon problem. That they they you know it became a fewer fewer dragon. I'm sorry, uh, the spoilers Not there spoilers over here. time. Yeah. Spoilers. No, I mean, I, and I I enjoyed a lot of Game of Thrones. Um, and and I was aware of the connection between the creators of this. So that was one of the few things I was aware of. And and one thing that really made me hopeful about the show was I think that those guys are the, the people who run this who make Game of Thrones are strongest when they already have pre written source material that people mm. like and adapting it. That they made a lot of, I think, smart adaptation decisions at various points of Game of Thrones. Not always, but yeah. I mean, those first four seasons, I I, I adored watching yeah. those first four seasons. Of the show. What I they think is interesting job. is those those first few seasons of Game of Thrones. That's where they're really adapting the books really faithfully. Those books exist at least, and then the books no longer exist, and they have to, you know, not totally make it up, but they have to piece together George R. R. Martin's notes. This they have three full books, and rather than do like every season is a book. Uh, they've been taking stuff from book three and putting it into season one and book two into season one. So they've been mixing and matching. Uh, so if you are just trying to experience the show, but you are now interested in the books, I think it seems like reading the books will spoil, uh, uh, you know, uh, or just watching like season one has already spoiled elements of the books. Uh, so sorry. 
if that was a thing <laughs> you were looking forward to. Uh, but I think that the books also seem like a very separate enterprise because the characters are almost completely created for the show, it seems like. Um, that the show, uh, that the books are from, uh, you know, were written in China, are about China in a very prominent way. The, uh, the, the, um, the rights to this show, I believe it was part of like the, uh, the Western deal that it could not be prominently featuring China. Uh, so like that's not like even a creative decision. That's part of like the negotiations to acquire three body problem. There's a lot of really interesting stuff to read into the backstory, including a thing that Chappelle and I got into uh, on the podcast the first go around that they had 20 million dollars an episode to make three body problem. Is that a surprise to you, Christian? That is stunning to me. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't realize that Jake the Tapper 20 million dollar problem. Rate. For appearances yeah i didn't yeah. realize that all i'm assuming that all went to jake tapper for his 20 seconds on screen i don't know he, I, I i think I, jake tapper was on twice i feel like they yeah, every exactly. time they could go into the news jake tapper's on there yeah i i mean i i mean i, I was watching the show and, and I, I could clearly tell they were trying to shoot for something uh, adjacent to like a west world or a game of thrones quality but like i'll tell you watching the show i don't know where that money went yeah. i mean it's not it's it's not a cheap looking show but it doesn't look like 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 what to me Westworld looked flawless when I watched that. That was like a ten million dollar an episode, you know, inflation or whatever. But that was like ten million an episode, hundred million dollar season that first season of Westworld was. So you told me it's twenty. Yeah, I'm like, it, it's not like it's not like they they got like 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 super A tier cast, you know, for this. And a lot of them. Are, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, did, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to insult Samuel Tarley so much. Dare but, you. You know, star, star, star of Moonfall. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Moonfall was an underrated, underrated sci-fi cult classic. You coward! You craven! Not you craven! <laughs> I was stunned when I heard that was a twenty million dollar an episode yeah. show. I where does that money go? I don't know. I think it went to the uh, the Jake Tapper appearance fees, the 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 Joe Biden appearance fee. Maybe did you oh, catch yeah. Biden mm. in there? Biden's but we got a three body problem. He was really worried. Uh, he shows up for a hot second. So Biden's president of the three body problem universe. Mm. Um, maybe towards. I don't know, Chappelle, that insane sequence in which invisible lasers tear an entire tankard full of men, women, children, mm -hmm. uh, old people, scientists, students, teachers, pipes, boat pieces, blood, gore. My soul. Viscera. My soul yeah. was torn asunder My by soul. that scene, but we'll get to that. Uh, yeah. This That's very crazy. harrowing, horrible, gross, and the good guys are doing it scene. Uh, mm -hmm. That was something that may have cost twenty million dollars, Chappelle. The boat probably cost a lot. They also took someone's brain out in this uh, in this show as well. They did. They they. Yeah, I just want to get in really quickly before anyone else coins the term "brain Stark," but that's who that is. Okay, all right. <laughs> I think you were safe. I think you were safe yeah. with that one. Bra brain Stark. Sure got it. Yeah, brain Stark. Yeah. Listen, they they shot the brain out into outer space, and then they just blew up a bunch of like nuclear bombs as well. And that yeah. had to cost a lot of money. You know, there's yeah. no way you could CGI that without like 20 mil per episode. I think I think they just you know waste. They use very little at the beginning, and then yeah. as it got further and further in, they just started to pour more money to where that's actually not CGI at all. All that stuff is re it really happened. All of that really happened. They went full I Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I deferred your expertise, Sh Chappelle, on this matter of uh, yeah. of nuclear explosions. But yeah, that's <laughs> it, it was it was a lot. Anyway, so I I was stunned to hear it was that it was it was that much money. I just I I mean the effects look 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 okay, but you know I think they could have for that kind of money. I, I expected their CGI monkey to to oh my god a little bit it was more awful. believable. Oh yeah. yeah I, what was the CGI it, monkey's name? Like Koyu or something? I don't uh, know. It was awful. It it legit was awful. I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty sure you could just got a real monkey. Dr. Yeah, I don't think you heard anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is this great, for those who are just going to listen to the podcast and not watch the show, we haven't spoiled too, too much yet. We did spoil, like, there's this huge laser cutting set piece in which everybody just gets final destination left and right. It's just a massacre. Uh, but beyond that, I feel like you're still okay if you're going to check out the show. But a really important hook is there is a scene towards the end of this first season in which a completely computer-generated monkey is uh, put into and taken out of cryosleep and uh, tempted uh, to answer 
psychological profile questions with a banana and then he barfs and uh liam cunningham davos seaworth after that it's like sweet human race is safe sign me uh, up. So, it's like sign me up is what sign he said, me up. I believe, i'm into that is. yeah yeah there maybe you want okay. to watch the show is the point yeah. <laughs> so you watch the show so but for those who are, who are still in here without a lot of heavy spoilers okay because yeah. mm-hmm. i like my your my experience was different than you got two and then the remaining six okay yes i got a five then the remaining three that's a very um, different experience i think with the way this season paces out for it, sure absolutely in like fact two is, sle- already, two is sleepy it doesn't really start to wake up until that third episode i think I would say, in fact, my my impressions from watching the show, and I have a lot of opinions. Hope you all got brought some snacks. Uh, but the <laughs> the uh, is, is he, episode five ends where I would expect a season finale to end because at that point, at season five, we told it there are aliens. So the big the big hook here is that all there are these strange events, these these weird things happening in physics, all of these you know countdowns on people's eyes, and it's revealed for certain by that point that it's aliens. And at the end of episode five, uh, the aliens reveal themselves to the entire world, and the episode cuts to black after this giant alien eye in the sky, mm-hmm. announcing that all of humanity are bugs who will be presumably squashed or put in a terrarium. I don't know which. One of the two. <laughs> and and I was like, that's where you cut the season. In fact, I would I think I would enjoy the show more if it paced itself out in a way where that was the end of the season mm. and it's the mysteries built up because everything in the episodes thereafter, like the, ep- the next episode after that episode six picks up with like, you know, world is in chaos. Jake Tapper has things to say on the news and about, about all the things going on, you know, the discovery of the sofa. That's that feels like the opening sequence of season, season two. two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it feels like to me. I wish they paced it that way. Um, so, cause I, 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 but my overall impressions of this show was I would find myself intrigued and then frustrated mm. constantly as I'm watching this show. And it has nothing to do with the books. I never read the books. I'm not, it's not even having a lot to do with science nitpicks, but we will get to those. Mm. Um, it, 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 at some, uh, like sometimes I will like some of the characters, for instance, um, you know, Wei, Ye, Ye Wen Jay, the opening sequence. Yeah. I loved her character. You know, Keiko mm-hmm. O'Brien from, from Star from Star Trek. Uh, I was like, oh, she, she, she's back. She's back. To you. And I, I love, we were, I felt so motivated by her character. She, 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 uh, she was seeing those struggle sessions of her father getting killed. And then, and, but she, but she gets a, a place in basically a radio telescope program in China. I, I did, I loved watching her character. I loved watching her arc. Everything in the, the China stuff was great. I loved it. But then they flash forward to the future and like the characters, some of them I like. I I, I like Benedict Wong. I think I, he's actually one of the characters whose humor stands Clarence. out for me. Clarence. Clarence. Gotta love Clarence. Clarence I love the real one. one. He, yeah. he nails that performance. But like our introduction to what are like kind of our main cast are them like complaining at a bar at these people who are terrible at karaoke and condescending to some guy who doesn't know anything about science by using lots of science techno babble. I'm like, am I supposed to like these characters? Are these our heroes? Yeah. And and over time we get more scenes where we control the to make them more rootable. But I was like, I don't know. I feel like it's like, ah, excitement. Then then ripped away. I'm like, oh, should I care about these people? They're all depressed. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's just a storytelling issue. Like I feel like this whole Oxford Five, you know, I'm I, I'm not a storytelling expert. I'm a I'm more a robot guy. But like I would write this show, you know, where you see these people for the first time during the good times, maybe when they're about to graduate with their PhD in Verrier's lab. You know, they're already they're having here. many body problems by the time we meet these characters. They're, they're the end. We call that the end body problem, uh, Josh. Mm. And, and yeah. it is, you know, the end mm. can be a large number. But the, but like, so like, I feel like, oh, I'm excited. And then I'm like, ah. and then that happens with the plot too. There are things, the elements of the plot. This is cool. And then crazy shenanigans happen. Kakamimi schemes take place that I just cannot abide. Mm. And I just, I, and, but like, uh, so, so like. You're think, out on the brain in the space capsule. I how many hours do we have for the break? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, 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 I watched it the first time. I'm like, this is crazy. And then today I went and rewatched so many of the scenes I had problems with to get more details. And I was like, they became more insane. <laughs> I was I was like, 
I, I, I don't worry. I have categories of problems with some of these scenes. And so, and I think that and I ordinarily wouldn't care so much, but I think the reason I care so much is like, I saw there were some high highs of this show. Yeah. I feel like I would love to, to enjoy it more than I do. I see the potential for, for a show where the science fiction premise is it's a game of wits between two omniscient photon sized supercomputers running around the world and the entire uh, collective force of humanity. A game of wits between these two things. Like that should be the sci-fi premise. And it's not quite that. Yeah. So that's my that's where I'm coming from today. So I I, I liked a lot of parts of it, but I, I find it frustrating. I really think that the premise is kind of neat that like here's these aliens from a civilization supremely far away. They're on their way, but it's gonna take them forever to get to you. So when they at first they say Chappelle, like, yeah, they're coming in four hundred years. Like, 400 Whoa. years from now. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, oh, man. <laughs> Woo. That's for y'all. Right. <laughs> like, I ain't going to be here. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I was yeah, like, that... uh, I was like Saul when Saul's like, look, I'm not going to have kids. They might, like, this shit ends with me. Why do I care? Uh, right. I was like, I don't even have any people who live in the world of your show. Uh, right. Are you telling me that none of these people, none of the Oxford Five are going to actually have to deal with any of this? So, why am I suddenly going to be nervous about the future of the show? But then they do introduce this premise that, Christian, I'm going to need some help uh, understanding, at least as far as how the show puts it, that sure. the, that the, the, the Santi uh, are able, the aliens, the Santi, Chappelle, are, Santi. Able, are able to communicate through supercomputers that are able to have immediate eyes and ears on anything that's happening on earth. They know where you are. They're watching every single one of your moves. They're listening to every single thing that you say. They're able to like beam their observations and their ability to control technology from far away. So while they are physically 400 years away and while they believe that by the time they show up, if they don't, you know, successfully F around with modern technology, they're themselves going to get stomped out. They say it's a funeral procession if we show up without blowing up your science. But it now becomes sort of like this battle of the wits, to your point, Christian, is the premise of, OK, well, how are we going to outsmart these aliens that are not even physically here? that are going to show up in 400 years, which is a future problem. Um, but we can't even prep against it because they can listen to and see every single thing we say. Well, here's how we'll solve it in a very, very cinematic decision. We will have the job left up to three individuals on Earth who are not allowed to ever, ever say the plan, write down the plan, communicate the plan to anyone at any time in any way at all. And these three people have been charged with facing off against these aliens in some sort of like, like, I don't know, like telepathic chess game kind <laughs> of deal. It's kind of fun, but I don't know that it's super cinematic. And there are times when the show gets very Game of Thronesy. Uh, Ramin Jawadi is the composer of Game of Thrones and the composer of Three Body Problem. And there's a couple of moments here across the show where I'm like, why are we doing like Daenerys Targaryen triumphant right now? It's just cicadas. These are just <laughs> cicadas. Why is the music like this right now? So sometimes it feels like the show is aiming for something really epic when the idea is a lot more like a science fiction book. So um, I, I actually really enjoyed a lot of the concepts and I think that some of the, some of the characters worked for me um, by the end of the season, I would have been happy if the show was just about Davos uh, from <laughs> Game of Thrones, just like Batmaning around Wade, Wade, yeah. the character Thomas yeah. Wade. Like named uh, international intelligence organization that yeah. I desperately tried to Google if they said what it was during <laughs> the show. And thankfully someone told me it didn't, they didn't, I didn't miss anything. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Uh, I thought, I I thought mean, he was interesting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, Chappelle, I mean, you, 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 you enjoyed the show and I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad one of the three of us. I'm really I'm most, I mostly had a fun time watching okay. it. I definitely did, but there's definitely, I have a lot of questions as well. Okay, well, well, maybe we'll go back to you. you sort of like started by posing that as a question to me. Like, what's the what is going on here? 
in terms of the in terms of the plot of these sophons as they're called these uh, you know these proton sized supercomputers yeah so wait can and, you explain what they are because sure. this is a little confusing to me so there's so, so, so there's, there's supercomputers that were able to get here faster than the aliens so here it is okay so yes the and if you accept a couple of science fiction conceits this is actually pretty cool this concept okay where um one if you you can take something as small as a proton, you know, like the, the, the nucleus of a heat of, of a hydrogen atom, and you can actually accelerate it super, super fast. We do it all the time in these particle colliders. And by super by accelerating them super fast and we collide them, they have these big energetic uh releases. That's how we find the Higgs boson in these large hadron colliders and stuff. Okay, so that's the thing. They actually say that in the show and do a good job saying we currently, with our current technology, can accelerate tiny things to a very close to speed of light. So Given that I believe the this planet is something like four light years away, it only takes about four years to send a particle that fast to us, right? Heavier stuff, it's harder to accelerate that fast. And so they're able to ship off little little particles. And now they're able to communicate across fast spaces. Again, this is a bit of a science fiction conceit, but it's using a real concept called quantum entanglement. Okay. And this is something that's often in a lot of science. Isn't that what Tarzan like was in? Yeah. With his wife. Oh my yeah. god. Now Where Tarzan and his wife in a quantum is that was that a three body problem? Uh, you, you know, I won't, I won't speculate as to how many. There's a three auto body problem because he had to get the shocks. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess so. Man, this is, this is, this is like a reference within a reference. This is kind of amazing. You know, yeah, this, this is you know, a challenge. About. This is a challenge to uh, Mike Bloom, who says that all of my Survivor references are stuck in the 30s. Well, I could get back to 24 at least. I could well, still count go. down to 24. <laughs> You are entangled with that era in the past, yeah. you know, uh -huh. maybe, but the, the number 24 and I think, too. Yeah, it's true. So, so the idea that, uh, so quantum entanglement, like if you, that you, if you entangle two particles together, uh, you know, one's going to like have like, and if you are able to look at them or observe them or, or you could say, oh, this one's like, uh, like a state that's up and the other one is state that's down. They, they spin up, spin down. Like they will be entangled. If one is up and the other is down. And you could take these two particles and you'd separate them by light years, and they will still be entangled. And if someone goes and observes the one, the other one will show up as down. So the idea is that, oh, you could theoretically use this to uh, communicate faster than light by, you know, by, by observing one and separating the other. It doesn't quite work like that. That's not actually, you can't actually use it for faster than light communication, but a lot of science fiction novels use that idea. So you have these tiny proton sized things across across you know uh, four light years. You could theor according to this sci fi premise, they could communicate with each other, right? Yeah. Okay. So the idea is that they shrunk a supercomputer the size of a planet down to a proton. Okay, sci fi nonsense. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll accept it, and we'll also yeah. ignore conservation of mass. That this proton is not the mass of a planet, but we'll ignore that as well. Okay. Right. And so because these protons, they can presumably be accelerated really quickly, these little, these little Sophon computers can zip around the planet at near light at like near light speeds. And and this was this is when I, I was actually most engaged with the show. Because like in my head, like I watched the end of episode five where they explained all this. And I and, and the next day I talked with Emily, we we're cooking dinner, and I'm like, you know. If I were in this universe, like I would have used the fact that these particles are still limited by the speed of light in terms of how fast they can travel around the Earth. Maybe we could have multiple experiments with these with these uh, super colliders, which are the things that they are messing with. They are messing with the science, so we can't learn anything. Science is broken. Ru yeah, yeah, the, the, the science is broken, and apparently all of, all of science is only particle physics, Josh. That's so it. No, sure, no scientist yep. would be upset with that. Be with that. Be, with that being conflated. Yeah, but that's another thing. Yeah. Um, the, but like I would run particle experiments all over the world at the exact same time. They can only move so fast and it would be kind of a game of wits as to figuring out which, uh, a, 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 which particle, which particle accelerators are right and which are wrong, but that's possible. That would be a really interesting way to do it. I turn on the next episode and they say exactly that. Mm. I'm like, that's when I'm like, I am in the show. Yeah. They, and they, that's so when they, I'm like, this is why Christian's the wall facer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so, 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 so I was, I, I was so excited. And I was cheering. I was literally cheering. I was so excited because that's good sci-fi right there. When you understand the world well enough that you can come up with your own solutions that aren't just magic because you know enough about the world. And, but, the, but then I realized the person who, who gives that plan 
is Wade, the head of the intelligence organization. And he's explaining it to uh, Jin Chung. What is Jin Chung's like specialty? It is, uh, it is meta studies of particle physics experiments all around the world. It's like, why isn't she given th this idea? Why isn't this her idea? Because and all of her friends are either like dying or have been murdered already or are secretly involved with an alien worshiping cult. But this is what she's got a lot going thing. on. A lot, she's got a lot going on. But this also, is, but, but, she's like her boyfriend, like is kind of like into killing people with lasers. She doesn't know. And then, but, but on top of that, it's not like that she doesn't come up with that idea. They say, like, you know what we need you to do? Come up with a space program. That's gonna like launch a thing in the space. Like, is this her field? Yeah. Like she she studied part of uh, she studied particle physics. Got her PhD as 2016 under Ben Verrier. I know because I paused the the the, ch the the yarn chalkboard scene 60 times to get all the details of these characters so I knew no, them. No. But but like but the this is this her field? And shouldn't she be overseeing the project that? Does the particle physics experiments from all over the world analyze the result? You know, the thing that she explained is her thing. And I'm like, what? What are we doing? And yeah. so, again, I was so excited. And then immediately, I'm like, what? what? She's launching a brain in the space? Yeah. Like, they don't, they don't, I don't think they teach that. In they, did that. School. they did anyway. that. They did that. They did that. And, and I guess, Chappelle, I'm trying to understand why totally that they did that. So, this guy, uh, Brainstark, as I call him, Will. Uh, yeah. who, who is uh, Sweet Will, who ends up getting all of the money from Samuel Tarley after, and we just have not stressed this enough, after he's murdered, they killed him. They, they killed, killed him. My, they killed my boy. They killed my boy. They killed, they killed my boy. Yeah. They killed my child. Uh, yeah. Samuel Tarley, they killed him in the third episode. They Sean beamed sad. Samuel Tarley. They killed yeah. him. And they at that point, that. I was like, everybody can die. It felt like Game of Thrones again. Like, oh, well, I thought our main characters would, would matter a little bit more. I mean, they told us basically in episode one that Will was going to die. So I was like, oh, well, is anybody going to survive? i about him, him, you know? Yeah. Uh, but then Sam, they killed Sam. They stabbed Sam with an invisible person, stabbed Sam in the neck with the, with the blade, and he died. Mm -hmm. That lady, but she's the angel of death. Coming, right? Yeah. Did you think he was going to die? Kind of had to know he was going to die. He wasn't really helping, you know, and it was just playing the game. He was breaking the rules as well of the game. It was kind of like, yeah, he's going to go eventually. Yeah. But he kept, he looked really great in all of those period uh, costumes. Uh, and I was, I was thrilled to, to have him along as far as we did. But I do think it was sort of this wink and nod to itself that sometimes could be like a little, you know, whatever for me. But other times I thought this was kind of cute. It's like, well, we never killed Samuel Tarley. Spoilers for Game of Thrones. You know, he was like, he was our Hurley. We, spoilers for Lost. Uh, we're not, <laughs> we're not going to do that to him. We won't do that. Uh, and so now they like lean on, uh, you know, people who are going to watch as they were Game of Thrones fans. Oh, there's Samuel Tarley. Oh, there goes Samuel Tarley. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I think that there is something kind of clever uh, with, uh, you know, being in conversation with yourself as creators. But anyway, Will, brain in a rocket, uh, inherits all of Samuel Tarley's vast fortune, his, uh, he was a potato chip heir, Christian. As we all want. Oh, as we all want we to be. We all want to be, uh, yeah, kings of the crisps. Uh, <laughs> and so he made many crisps and made much money, and he died, and the money goes to Will. Uh, and now Will has the uh, the ability to buy stars? He went and bought so, a star. What's the name of the organization they bought the stars from? I don't know. Stars, mm -hmm. our the stars, our destination, which is a mouthful. Except for the why would it be called that? Except the fact that we literally know that as the, that the creators know they're going to shoot this guy off into the stars, which are his destination. Um, now, as we know from watching the show, he he's not get, he's not on course to meet the aliens. What what star do you think he's going to end up at? He's I'm definitely. Curious. I mean, but but this is my question. He's a brain in a rocket, and their plan is to send this man's brain in a rocket to be intercepted by the Santi. Mm -hmm. So they're going to give Brainstark to the Santi, and they're going to do what with it? What's they're the going, thought? 
the Santi is going to take the brain in uh -huh. of their own. They're going to take it and then potentially rebuild a body for the brain so that then they can ask it a bunch of questions. Because I think there were parts where Jen was like, well, maybe, 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 just maybe the brain is out there, but it's not useless. The Santi is going to take that. And then one day, Will might walk again. And I was thinking, is that really what you want? Is that, is that really what you want? I mean, there were even moments where Sir Davos was talking to her and was like, uh, no, it wasn't even that. I think it was when Will was talking about it, and they're just like, uh, yeah, so what if those people just torture you forever? Oh, it was Saul. Saul had brought yeah. it. He's like, you know, your brain could just be like used for random stuff. He's like, oh, no, it's fine. He's like, what if they hurt you? He's like, I won't feel it. I don't have a body. What if they create a body for you? They can do anything. Remember, we're bugs to these uh, aliens, so we don't know how much power they have. I'm assuming they're assuming that they're going to want that brain and to utilize it. Now, again, they know this plan is happening. These aliens see this entire plan. So it would behoove the aliens to not use that brain and to actually ignore it. But maybe maybe they're trying to double cross the aliens. I don't really know why they would go for this, but there's a brain in outer space and they have one shot to get it there <laughs> using <laughs> several bombs and shocker, it, it does not go in the right direction. It, it veers you know, off course. Science is broken. And uh trillions you know, of dollars. <laughs> trillions. It's of only dollars a little bit more Chappelle. than they had per episode to make the three body. Uh, yeah, I'm bit. sorry, yeah. Chappelle. Please continue. I just had to point out and trillions of dollars yeah. for this plan. Yeah, for something that's gonna happen hundreds of years from now. So it's like, yeah, we're all just gonna go broke trying one thing, just one thing. And it was just it was so lofty of a goal anyway. Someone should have shut this down. I don't know why they did it. Yeah, people should be outraged at the use mm -hmm. of resources in this world. I, 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 one one broader issue I have with the show is that the world building is kind of inconsistent. Let's just say, and that there are times where where if uh, where I'm like they're introducing cryostasis, I'm like, okay, this is definitely some kind of alternate timeline. We don't have no cryostasis that you can wake up from. Then you realize we're in Joe Biden's America. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, uh, 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 so which, which is it? Which is it? Are we yeah. in super mm -hmm. weird alternate time? But like, and one big part of this is like, this plan is bananas. It's crazy. Like, uh, uh, like I mean, I, I I haven't talked about the ship slicing scene and how that is also <laughs> bananas. But I think for it's reasons crazy. that I think it's this is why I I just can't. And um, it, <laughs> but the, the, like, but just like, let's forget even the this what, everything you beautifully outlaid there, uh, Chappelle about. Of course, naturally, these aliens are going to want to reconstruct a body for this guy in a way where he might be able to send a message back to us using their faster than light communication to us that they'll let us do. Like, it's all so vague. Maybe they do What's, just want to be pen pals. Yeah, well, he's a physicist, that, too. They might be able to get some good information from yeah, him, you know? Yeah, you use yeah. I mean, clearly, the show thinks this is a smart idea. So in some way, this is going to pay, I'm assuming, going to pay off, maybe. Uh, but, like... But let's just, I, I couldn't get over the just how you get him to that spaceship. Once, like, I, I watched the scene the first time, and I think I was in denial when they were describing <laughs> the plan uh, of, of with the nuclear bombs. Now, now using nuclear bombs at a solar sail, that's not inherently uh, a, a, a bad, a, a, an implausible way to accelerate an object. Um, using 300 of them to do them in succession, where you have to make sure that it doesn't get, you couldn't, you couldn't be a micron. Off right. in terms of precision, and like we would know the yield calculations of the of these things down to the to the to the tiniest fraction of a of of a percent to get this right. It's it's insane. It's insane. And and and, and the fact that the uh, the objections to this by the Nobel Prize winning committee is like, well, it's really expensive. And we better, <laughs> did you know uh -huh. that there are treaties about nuclear weapons? Like they said, we can rewrite the treaties, Christian. We can get the money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can show you the money. Know that it's like it's like <laughs> this is what they brought in the scientists to say. Where did they find these people? Like their job was just to say no to everything. I'm like, have these people ever met a scientist? You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, we, we can be curmudgeonly, we can be pains in the butt, but like you know, it's like you know when when the world. I don't know. You think it's so unbelievable that some sort of globally felt crisis that required leaning on science would not just be like money would be poured into it. Everyone would be like, yeah, okay, science this one out for sure. You don't no, think that's not the problem. That's not the problem. Of no. course they would throw all that money at what I'm concerned, what was actually bothering me is the scene itself. Of course we can rip up trees. Of course we can throw trillions of dollars at a save the world project. 
I, I don't have a problem with that. It's just how, it, I think it's just how the dialogue is written in these scenes. You have the main character who's the brilliant one who came up with the right answer and surrounded with all this, with, with, there's a scene with all the panel of Nobel laureates who are like, who are, who are objecting to it in the dumbest possible way. Like no one, like they're like, well, the one, the one point that was really valid, which was um, there's no margin for error for this. And I would say basically negative margin for error. Like this is absurd. Yeah. And her response is, well, it's not zero. <laughs> what? what it's not zero. Is this our only shot? Is this our only plan? This is, yeah. this is ridiculous. So Christian, anyway, you yeah. would think you would think this early into this crisis, you wouldn't just be throwing it all at one solution, right? Like some people say it throughout. You, we have decades, centuries, essentially, yes. to to figure this out. You wouldn't just so all right. This is the first plan we got. Just go for it and just throw everything at the wall because, like you said, the margin of error is so large. You would think that you would spend more time kind of parsing this out. Yeah, I also think that there's no world in which the popular response to all of this happening would end up being like the average person being like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, throw a trillion dollars into the rocket with the brain inside of it on the off chance that it'll be intercepted by the Santi aliens who are 400 years away from arriving here and maybe have the ability to reconstruct a body around a brain. Uh, I don't think you're going to get the average uh, civilian on board with this. I think the average civilian is like, this is why my taxes are going up next year <laughs> is because you're shooting brains into space at aliens that are 400 years away. That was your plan. This is, this is not our problem yet. Why aren't we just doing actual problem solving instead of shooting rockets that cost trillions of dollars into space. And now yeah. you are, you were asking me to pay for more, sir. I don't think this would fly. I don't think people would be in. I think people would be out. I think the world we're in suggests strongly that no one is in on this solution to the three body problem. Uh, yeah. I mean, and keep in mind, this is modern politics. So that means like those, all those nukes that they had to put, they put ended up having 300 of them in the space. You tell, you know, you know, Vladimir Putin's like, Oh yeah, sure. Have yeah, Like in our you know, world, like, the show does very clearly exist. Like Biden's president, Jake Tapper is employed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. This world, we're all going to agree to fire a trillion dollars worth of nuclear arms into space instead of, I don't know, at each other? Like, no. What kind of world are we living in? No way. And there's Absolutely a, and there's not. A way, and there's a way you could write that so much uh, better, in my opinion, or like more in a way that feels more real. Because like when that happens, it's not, you know, you could call that nitpicking. Like, oh, Christian, don't science nitpick. What it does is it takes, you, at least me, out of the show i'm like because oh, otherwise they're like they're trying to build up oh real some realism there's particle physics experiments these are these are people like they're just they're, they're trying to build a realistic world that exists yeah. today and then they yank it out of it and that can lead, lead to be a disconnect that's why i get a little, little like that's why i get a little frustrated about it. it's like oh because there could be a version of that like how would this actually go down let's say we have this problem and what would what would go what would happen is that the government would put out probably a call for proposals from all kinds of manner of organization, Boeing would have their own proposal as to how to handle the SOFON problem. You know, uh, um, you know, so, so Northrop Grumman or you know, you know, SpaceX and everyone, everyone put their government proposals out, and you'd be reviewing all these proposals, and it, it, and it actually be kind of a fun in joke. It's like something about a. Uh, shooting a brain with nukes. Okay, throw that in the garbage. You know, like, and then, but and then maybe they could uh, have a scene. Where it's like, well, what if we do this? And it, th that that way, it feels like it's more considered, and it could make the world feel more believable. And then when the characters do something that's like that's really smart, you're like, okay, it's not just because science is basically magic in this universe. It's because there are rules to this world. And that makes you feel immersed. Yeah. So I think that that's what that's my frustration with it. I was like, what, what yeah. Then I think on the other side of that, uh, I watched a scene in which uh, two of the five Oxford Five watched as a third member of the Oxford Five had a sheet put over his body as his brain was scooped out of his head and placed into a cryostasis cylinder to be rocketed off into space. So I did mm. that today. I watched that. Mm. And I don't know that I regret it. I liked it. I did. I don't care. Listen, it wasn't about the science at that point. Because I'm at telling that point, you. At I did. I was like, did you just do that? Did that yeah, just happen like, on my show? 
that's very weird. You know, Christian points out that these these uh, Oxford Five, they're not very likable. I don't know if we're supposed to connect with them initially because I didn't. I definitely did not. I was more kind of like I thought we were following maybe Augie is the best of the of the group. So let's kind of right. watch her. Then she's like, nope, I'm depressed. I'm drinking. Leave me alone. So we leave her. And then it's like, OK, well, Sam's here. Let's talk to Sam. Oh, he's dead. OK, not Sam. And it's like Saul seems like he sucks. I don't want to talk to Saul. And now we land on Jen and we're like, OK, let's do it. But in the meantime, Will is dying. And this is where I guess four or five episodes in, I actually start to care because when I tell you I hated this man's guts, the moment I found out he used all that money to buy a star, it's like people are dying, Kim. Are you serious? What are, what are you? Are you crazy? You bought a star, all that money. And then. And, and he didn't even tell her. And didn't even tell her. He's like, don't tell her. If you ever tell her, I, I, I'll never forgive you. Know, I'll be so embarrassed, blah, blah, blah. Like, you bought her a star. You should be embarrassed. And so. Was that then, an impulse I, buy? Oh, it, it had to be. I mean, he's on his way out. He's like, yeah. I got a, a limited amount of time. I can't take the money with me. I'm like, but you could do really good things for people. I'm sorry. You don't have to buy a star for someone. But he does. And so I'm out on Will. But the entire sequence that, you know, where she finds out about the star He's on. He's about to euthanize himself to use his brain. That she's trying to get to him. I just felt my heart growing in size, and I was like, "Oh God, I kind of like this." Oh no, I want her to get there. She needs to know. And her boyfriend sucks. We don't like Raj anyway. You know, like you could go. Yeah. Will can tell you this thing, and I should not have been invested in that relationship. But in the over the course of an episode and a half, they really roped me in to where when he got his brain taken out, I was like, "Well, damn, you couldn't wait five minutes." You know. Speaking of. Speaking of being roped in, uh, can we talk about the invisible roping? Oh, God. <laughs> of an entire tankard filled with human life that just gets completely Close turned into, into goo. Yeah. yeah. It, like laser clothes lined through an entire tankard of people at the not quite a uh, little past the midway point of this season in one of the. Uh, I don't know, Christian. This was a pretty shocking sequence, I would say. I I don't I I like saying nice things about shows. Yeah. So please know this hurts me. Yeah. Wanted to say, but it is on one of the most confounding sequences I've seen on a television <laughs> show. <laughs> I, um, have either of you ever seen the uh, early two thousands horror film Ghost Ship? I have seen Ghost Ship. Yeah. I think Isaiah Washington's in it. Some mm -hmm. other people are in that. Yeah, I've seen Ghost Ship. Uh, yeah, in the first scene of Ghost Ship, they uh, clothesline the ship, and then it becomes a ghost ship as a result of being clotheslined. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> this is to say that maybe Ghost Tankard in Three Body Problem Season 2. I, I saw it happen. I was half asleep. I, I would like to blame it on that. I saw it happen, and I was like, wait, did I miss something? What just happened? And so I had to watch it again. Now, the first time watching it, it was gruesome. I legit was like, oh my God. And then I watched it again. I was thinking, well, how did we get here? How did we get here to the point where like, we were talking about the nanotechnology? It was very important. It was this big, you know, this big discovery that Augie had made. She was about to move forward with her, with her experimenting and all the stuff that she was going to do with that. But then she had to shut it down because the countdown that doesn't matter was going to happen if she didn't stop doing science. Cool. Next time we hear about this technology, it is used to destroy an entire boat of people. I, and I just, I did not know how we got there. I was just Christian, like, how oh. did we get there? How did we get here? So I could, I could write off the categories of problems I yeah, have. Yeah, let's with do it. Steam. Get into it. I, I, but I will summarize them with one word, which is why. Uh -huh. Why any of this? Like, 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 in uh, uh, and, and, and different levels, right? You could do for the plot level. Like they tried to have a scene where they say, well, we have to get to this hard drive. And if we do A, B, C, or D, or E, they won't work because it's logistically thing. He's like, I got a plan. And and uh, and it, so let's just take it at face value that you could somehow take something that was a proof of concept in a lab for their nanofibers that they just demonstrated in the lab for the first time, like yesterday, yeah. and scale it up to something the size of a canal that you could, uh, and, and somehow the company is going to be okay with this, by the way, this, they, they will, they, they're, they're, it's fine. I'm sure that's not, that all, that, not at all that expensive and requires resources to, to mass produce this thing that they only just made in the lab for the first time. Let's get rid of all those problems, the category of problems. Why was this a good idea to do even if you could? Like, like are, they're trying to get this hard drive back. I'm like, might this slice up that hard drive? And also you see what happens to this yeah, ship. Yeah, that feels ship, like the big flaw. 
uh, it's just kind of like, and also like, oh yeah, yeah, it's one of many. I mean, like, also you see what happens to the ship. The thing basically the, the, the disintegrates into the water. I'm um, like, and it's like, you know, fi- w- for which hard drives are famously uh, good at, at withstanding. <laughs> And um, I mean, uh, it's, just, it's just like, and and also the idea was that if you had done a raid on the ship, you know, kind of like a Bin Laden raid sort of thing, then it would have been a bloodbath or they could have destroyed the drive. They knew it was happening also. Like they figured out something was going wrong when people's faces were being sliced off. They could have hit the self-destruct on this thing anyway. So why did this happen? And because it's a TV show, I kind of have to be like, okay, why from a story standpoint? Mm. This happen? Mm-hmm. Oh, Maybe it's because Og they wanted to give Augie a reason to see like her technology used for ill and have a crisis of faith over whether or not she should be a scientist. And she has this diatribe in the next episode, but she's over it by the end of the next episode anyway. So I'm like, it's like, it's just like, I, I didn't feel, so what was the, what was the point of all of that? I mean, they got the hard drive because it magically worked. Unlike the other problem thing, which thank God that didn't work. That other, if, I, if that, if that brain, lot worked i don't i don't know i might have been out but yeah. if the why? nuclear bombs had launched the brain into space if that had worked could you imagine on, the first try. That, <laughs> on that first i mean keep in mind like like uh Jin is standing standing there at mission control because you always got to put people in mission control just like you have to have augie in mission yeah. control to make sure that she's the nanofibers are working and so it's very important she's a headset and everything that's how you know she's in charge of the of the mission of the, even though she's her job's already done um but the but there is a, but like when you have Jin at the uh, at the mission control, she's like, okay, first bomb off, yes, all right, second bomb off. So you realize you're gonna have to do this three hundred times, right? Like you know, this scene's not gonna go on that long. How many and did it take? Three, three. They got one percent of the way there, and <laughs> so oh, many, oh my god, so many nukes. Oh, they had so many more nukes. Yeah, I just, I just sorry. I, one one other one one of sixteen other things. I'll stop there at the at the, at the nuke launching scene. I cannot because like it's not only enough that they have to like it has to be accelerated by all those bombs. It has to be pointed at the right place where the ships are. They don't even know where the ships are. They don't know where the fleet is. Vaguely like, there. Vaguely there. And space isn't that big. I mean, if you miss by a little bit, you know who cares? You know, yeah. like why do we talk anyway? Okay, I, I'll, I'll I'll pause there and just take a deep breath while I let Chappelle okay. say some really funny things. Yeah, yeah. Chappelle, look, yeah. I, I have nothing to say about the the, the bombs because I I mean, who would think that you could get that right on your first try? I mean, you say they say science doesn't work, but I think every scientist in the world would be like, you know, the thing about experimenting is that you know it's trial and error. like you try something and then you report back your findings and then you make adjustments at that point. Like there, this is a one shot thing. And you are using your friend's brain for it. You know, I was just like, okay, that's that's cool. Y'all gonna freestyle. That's that's fine. But I really think they used that entire that entire sequence with the bow and all that stuff just to put Jen in a situation where she could say, Well, I don't know, y'all. I don't know if this war is worth it. You know, is, is, is it yeah. like her 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 boyfriend, Raj, literally says, You're upset with me because I just murdered a bunch of people as a part of this war, but you are also actively helping us with the war by creating this whole spaceship brain plot. You know, that's still a part of the war. We're not going to send the brain out there and then befriend these aliens. Our goal is to stop them by some way, right? And so by leaving a a, a whole bunch of aliens, just, and aliens, I'm sorry, alien cult supporters, I don't, we haven't really talked about that, but the oh, aliens yeah, sure. are being worshipped by people as well. I'm not quite sure how they got their, how they got their claws in everybody, but they got us. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah. Because of that, she's like, well, why would you kill all those people? Like, well, ma'am, which one is it? Are you part of the war or not? Because it seems like the goal is to make sure that this does not, this does not happen to us, that these aliens do not come get us in 400 years. We won't be here to see it, but the goal is to stop that for our kids, kids, kids. But she just, she lost track of it. So I feel like they did all that boat stuff just so she can look and be like, damn, that's crazy. You plan on doing that more? You plan on doing more of that? You know, they even compared it to Hiroshima. You know, they're like, oh, well, what's the limit? I think Augie throws it out there like, well, where's where's the limit to all yeah, of this the destruction? Like, there, a- aliens are coming. People, <laughs> aliens are coming. People are going to die. It's a, I don't know. So for me, that was my biggest issue with the character driven part was like, damn, you would think the scientists would understand this. You would also think that uh, this show existing contemporaneously with our world, it existing in March 2024 of the world of three body problem. Um Oppenheimer just won Oscars, guys. Yeah. Like, 
you would think that they would have a little bit more respect for the uh, the the ramifications of using a nuclear device that they wouldn't just launch 300 of them willy nilly Christian. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's that. I mean, I think that one thing that uh, I mean, Chris Nolan would would tell you not to do this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there is space for a thoughtful discussion and interesting presentation of science and the consequences of science. I think it demonstrated that with Oppenheimer. And, and here's, and here's just like a compliment I'll, I'll pay to the show. Like, there are times where it actually takes some complicated concepts and explains them pretty well. Like, actually, very well for a TV show. Um, they it, like What's the best instance, one. Uh, honestly, it's when they're in the video game world, and you and you have. Well, I think it was the Alan Turing character, and I forget which which other scientist it was. And they were trying to calculate the three body problem with that giant human computer, where they're all the people are holding the flags, and they're all standing in this formation that look like like microchips. It's actually a very good demonstration of actually one of the real issues with the three body problem is that it, it's exactly as they said. That no, that there, that no computer can accurately calculate the position of a of a of a of a three body uh, system over time, you know, except for really really special cases. Um, and you know, we will ignore the fact that it's technically a four body problem because they're counting the planet that's orbiting the sun. That's but we'll the ignore that for the moment. Yeah. That's the fourth mm -hmm. body. We'll ignore that for the purposes. But I, but that, that was actually a really clever thing. And also, like the I I, I the idea of using people as like little. Um, Flip flops in a in a circuit that basically is a computer. That's really cool and then visually well done and explains what the three body visually problem was is all very about. Game of Thrones. So I, cool though. I was like, we're we're in Marine right now. Like this is <laughs> you know, we're back with Danny on the march. Yeah, and I, I think to the point where like so like when whenever the show is visually telling the story, I think it's at its best. I think that the dialogue is not as strong as the visuals can sometimes be. Sometimes it's just little touches that, I, that, I, that I'm thankful for. Like they're near the end when Saul Durand is being, we haven't talked about him being much of a wall facer yet. That's its own time. Oh yeah. Like he's being, but he's being flown on the plane and he opens up the window to his plane and he sees out the side multiple fighter jets. Like, oh, what a great way to visually tell the story of the fact that how, whatever the heck he is, he's something important's going on. Right, and I but need more of that stuff. See everybody and everything, and the 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 Santi through their uh, through their little computers, they're able to watch us all. They can send Teslas after you. Uh, your Tinder dates are not safe from the Santi. Uh, they are able to do all of that, and then they need to get to Saul to bring him to the United Nations so he can stand before CCH Pounder, who I'm so psyched is on so the show. Happy. That's great. Uh, that was great. Very good. Dutch. Uh, really wonderful seeing her. But he's on the plane. And if they can see everything, Chappelle, why didn't the, they have the fighter jets just like fly into the plane that he's on? And how come they won't just have other cars hit him? How is this man ever going to know peace again? Well, he won't. He's he's done. I, and I... I'm sorry. I did not like Saul at first, but by the end, I'm sorry. I've, I've been in love with the character because the idea that the government can just tell you, yeah, it's you. You're you're our secret weapon, and you can't. And as of this moment on, we will we will do whatever you say, and we're going to assume that everything you're telling us is the truth, and we're just going to go with it. And he says, "Well, I'm not in," and they're like, "Sure, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, exactly." <laughs> that was great. And he's like, "No, I'm not. I'm I'm not doing this." He's, they're like, "Okay." It's like, yeah, because his plan is supposed to be in his mind. He can never tell us the plan. So they're like, no, tell it. Like, you're really going to do this, right? He's like, no, 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 no. So now that he's saying, I'm not in, they're like, sure you're not. Sure you're not. I'm sure yeah. you got something cooking. Okay, but we'll leave you to it. He's like, no, seriously, don't leave me to it. I'm not doing this. Like, no, no, okay. I'm not the chosen Fine. one. I'm not the chosen one. <laughs> okay. Okay, right, yeah. If you say so, so anyway, where are we going? He's like, "What do you mean?" It's like we're your security detail because now you need. He's like, "Why would I need that if I telling you I'm not doing this?" He's like, "Sure, Jan." With that, what yeah, that's yeah. what the, anybody <laughs> in this position would say, you know. Yeah. Um, I believe it was the P the PDC was the name of the organization, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that's right, but I don't yeah. know. If that, I don't know what it stands for. 
it was the planetary defense council uh Got but you. the yeah but the thing is it's like the planetary defense council tells you this tells the entire world because remember they made this announcement at the un on tv like these are our people i think one was a military tactics historian uh the other was like a world leader or like a like a hero in some form and then it was like saul yeah the guy like, called Saul. <laughs> yeah and they did and for some reason, these other two people don't seem to be having the same issues that Saul has. Like, we haven't seen any type of security detail or any issues where they're trying to get killed. But Saul, he's very important. Oh, I don't, you I don't know. your name into the goblet of fire? You know, <laughs> like, like, how yeah, did you and get it, in here? You're and not he's like, no, seriously, I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and, the, and the Weasleys are like, sure, you didn't do it, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds right. Uh, yeah. What do we think of the the wall facer? Is it just that uh, Christian the uh, the the D's of GOT needed a wall to face? Uh, they were just like without a, without the Great Wall of the North, we need to build a new wall. Yeah, I think with Saul, I like what you're saying here, Chappelle, because it, one, it's 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 kind of hilarious to give someone like absolute power who absolutely does not even care or want it. He'd rather just get high at home. Apparently, is that it's always been the running joke? It's oh, he likes to get high. I'm like okay. And now, now, and so it sets up a carrier character arc for him to, you know, eventually take the job seriously and come up with the plans or whatever. Uh, the premise for why he is the wall facer is like, well, they wanted to kill him. So let's make him important. Yeah. Okay. okay all right. Sh sure. That's a bit of a flimsy reasoning. Like, I feel like, like Wade just says things and we're expected to believe them. And mm -hmm. uh, it happens all the time. Uh, and I will say, though, that I, I cannot take the name wall facer seriously. I just, yeah. I just can't. What do we I, call I, fact, said. I, I just, they, they, they just like call him. You're a wall facer, and then immediately, Rocket every scene brain, they're after, it was taken. I, I, every, every scene they're after, it's the scene, the, 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 the phrase is treated with such reverence. It's like I refuse the position of wall facer, dude. You just heard this term. It's laughable. Like, like I don't just, want it. It's, a, it's like, it, but it's, but like just the way, it, uh, like you have Jake Tapper with a straight face saying wall face or that man's a professional, but I still don't believe it. And just like that. It's it, like, I, 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 Jake Tapper's a nerd. He found out he could be on the show of the game of Thrones. People is like, yeah, I'll say whatever you want. The books. I have no yeah. problem he with Jake Tapper being books. on it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so like, I have no problem with, with, with his performance. It's just like, it, that's a pet peeve. I have like a lot of these sci-fi slash like young adults, not a young adult show, but like young adult series love to name things, stupid things. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, 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 game, like, Hunger Games, like, oh, what? Look out for the mutations. They're, yeah, they're, right. they're mutt. <laughs> yeah. The tracker yeah. jackers. I'm like, yeah. it's like, don't name things. Don't name things. Even when they named it the, the, the eye in the sky event, I'm like, that's what a mouthful. Do you know yeah. what they would name it? They would name it the date that it happened. Like, yeah. That's what yeah. happens these days. If something crazy happens, you name it the date. Oh, remember what happened on, on September 5th? Oh my goodness, September yeah. 5th. Yeah, the, the September 5th. Everyone remembers September 5th. Yeah, the 9 they 5 high. We remember that guy. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. The knife. Yeah, it, it, that that's they need to name things better, but that might be on the book. But like, and my other, it, it, so I so I think it's it's kind of a neat idea until you realize there are three all powerful people who can each ask for what they want. And I'm sure they will never conflict. I'm sure there's right. never going to be a what problem. What happens if uh, one of the wall facers is like, all right, bring me the head of wall facer number two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? That's what I need. Yes, and then Wall Facer number two is like protect me at all costs. Yeah. And so you're like, yeah, like the two military, like a like, military battle happens? in the middle of this. Yeah. What I mean, happens with the when the wall facers are at war with one another? And these wall facers are uncorruptible, right? Because yeah. the aliens still are influencing people on Earth. I mean, they have they have followers. There's an assassin who tries to take out Saul. So we're assuming that these three people are just untouchable, including I mean, we know Saul is gonna be untouchable because he's always gonna be followed around by Wade. Um, but these other two. I don't. I don't know if they're decoys. I. I don't even know if they officially even are like they're really in on the plan, or if they're is just like Saul people. A decoy. Like, is the are they all decoys? Is this right? Whole thing? Is this even the thing? Yeah, they're right. just trying to like throw them off the scent, you know? Because these aliens were very shocked to find out that humans could lie, Josh. That was our big twist here. You know what? Uh, like, Can I tell you something about that? So the uh, the High Sparrow from Game of Thrones, the great Jonathan Price, who gets laser beamed. Alongside everybody else who gets laser beams and is anchored. I couldn't believe that. It's like, no, all right, it's one thing you killed Sam Tarley, but this guy was like just getting interesting. And you just go, okay, you you hired uh like award-winning actor Jonathan Price to lay okay. Uh regardless of that, 
the um i think that like the the whole wall facer thing for me feels like is this just smoke and mirrors is this just mm. is this just subterfuge and in in that kind of thinking of like what sort of lies are being told because the whole story of the big bad wolf and the fact that you were a lying liar big bad wolf and this is what spooked the aliens into trying to conquer us we're supposed to take that at face value. I think the show is trying to tell you to question everybody's motivations. And I'm then inclined to question whether or not the Santi are as honest as they say. I think the Santi are a bunch of filthy liars. And I think that they, oh, well, we can't coexist with liars. Said the liars. Said the liars. <laughs> Uh, you, you tell me you don't trust people that say they can't lie. Is that what you're telling me, Josh? No is way. That, uh, no. That... And and then Davos Seaworth is like, all right, well, they've told us they can't tell a lie. Uh, so let's devise our entire plan. Behind. Like, that's yes. it. You the, believe the, the, them? The, and like, and the I'll be the one who has to freeze myself cryogenically for the next 400 years. And I'll wake up every week to say hi to my mother, which I suppose means my mother is also cryogenically frozen for all of these 400 years. I'm the one who needs to be kept alive because I'm the one who knows they cannot tell a lie. You fools. You're being <laughs> lied to. You're all being lied to by the aliens who are 400. You're being lied, from, lied to from 400 years away. That's tough for you. <laughs> it's hard. It's a, it's a lot to swallow considering everything that we know about the aliens is under the premise that they don't they don't lie, right? The aliens were baffled when they found out this thing. Like, you can do that? Wait, people can lie? That's yes. crazy. Like, yes. What are we now? We hate you and we're gonna destroy you. But we haven't really talked about Ye Win Jay, but she sucks. She's the worst. Like, she literally sold out the entire world. And don't get me wrong, it was the world was bleak. We saw in all her flashbacks and stuff where her dad is murdered for science and other things. Like, she's like, Yeah, this world sucks. I'm fine selling you out for aliens. And then she just does and leads a cult as well to follow these aliens. Yeah. And then on her way out, um, she has an interesting conversation with Saul. I don't know if y'all remember this, but uh, at the at the grave site, right? Yeah, I believe they were yeah. at the cemetery or something. And the story she tells, I think she told him it was a joke. I didn't laugh. I was very confused. Uh, do y'all remember what the premise of the story yeah, was? Yeah, it's something about uh, it's something about God. I forget exactly what about God. Don't it, play it, with God. Was the was God. the was the like the ultimate? You know, like premise of it like that was the like the moral of the story was don't play with god but what was she trying to tell him there like don't play with god as in like the aliens are uh, so far above and beyond you that you shouldn't get involved with them because they come in to kill y'all anyway so i don't i really was very curious to find out if y'all had any takes on that hmm. I mean, yeah, that's that's a great point, Chappelle. I, I I forgot to put that together. That she that's her parting words to him. I mean, the, the obvious one is don't just mess with the aliens. You know, like you know, don't don't play their game. It might might yeah. be the thing, but it also could be something. It could be something about the people who are in charge of him. You know, like the people who like which are like Wade, who's kind of like a guy. I, that's a thin. That's a thin speculation for me. But that's I think that's got to be that's that must be the clue as to what things to are to come whatever yeah. it is mm -hmm. i would next. i would guess that whatever plan saul has to devise in his head is like somewhat triggered by that conversation to the point that i wouldn't be surprised if she understanding that they are constantly being watched at all times but now feeling betrayed by the lord uh which uh, it's fascinating that it's called the lord uh the lord. like they can see all of our stuff they can read all of our stuff they know our culture they know our culture and they know that we lie they see everything uh and they're naming themselves after the lord is what they're calling themselves right like they're leaning into like trying to recruit people who are just going to do things in the lord's name like they're they're dirty. They're nefarious. Anyway, if she knows that at this point, if she's feeling betrayed, is she giving him some kind of clue that we don't yet understand that Saul has to like kind of like puzzle out in his mind palace? Uh, that's the closest that I have with that. Um, I don't know. Chappelle, do you have a theory? 
Well, there was this one moment as well. I, no, I don't have a theory, but there's this one moment where um, he's talking to to Jen, I think. And for a split second, it looks like he's about to tell her like, oh, you know, I have an idea. And he goes, no, nah, never mind. That's crazy. And he doesn't say what it is. And I was wondering if those two things were aligned, if maybe that, you know, in the conversation they were having really did spark something. Because again, he's telling us, I'm not in this. This is not for me. You no. know what? Whatever. Y'all can keep telling me I'm I'm a wall facer, but I'm I am telling you I am not. But what if he is? What if yeah. he really is just presenting my plan in that moment is I'm going to disavow everything that y'all are saying in hopes that it can give me a little cover. Maybe I can uh start to devise a plan if no, if people really think that I'm not devising a plan. Um, the other thing that I think Yay, Ye, Yay, when Jay and him talked about was the dark forest hypothesis. Something about aliens being out in the in civilization, but they have to be undetectable and all this other stuff. And I was thinking, what is he going to do with this information? She gave him a lot of info before she was yeah. ultimately killed by that woman who just disappears and who now has a video game. Yeah, yeah, she does oh. have a video game. Yeah, yeah. right. And this, I'm not quite sure why. Too, yeah, that's a that's a that's a lot of good info. Did you guys uh, like it when uh, video games played the song in the show? Yes, I screamed. I love Lana Del Rey. <laughs> it's just like oh just so you know what we're talking about just in case you forgot mm -hmm. understood i mean i the whole yay win jay I, I i tell you i i her character made a lot of sense to me obviously she sucks from a moral standpoint because she decided for all humanity that we all need to go and need to be taught a lesson by aliens i i was kind of hoping that hoping that some part of this is going to be a redemption tale for her that at mm -hmm. the end like she screwed her, she screwed everyone over and realized you know what maybe i should help uh undo my mistake and 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 then the process regains uh, some respect for humanity in the process, but instead she yeah. she just gets killed off camera, and, and it just delivers that parting message. But those, but yeah, whatever she's thinking has got to be the key to these future events, and it is certainly possible that we're not seeing everything at, at, not as everything is as it seems. I wonder if I'll find that satisfying or not. It depends on how much we're just being lied to. Yes, as so, audience members. So I have a question. Um, would it be possible in the scientific universe of the three body problem at all, Christian, for when she initially sent out the message to the aliens and said, come and take me, that the response that she got was like, yo, you are so lucky that I'm on shift tonight. You should not yes. be contacting us. It's not good. I haven't gone back since watching the end of the show to like cross reference what was said there, but could it be somehow, some way, it's my brain in a box? Will is able to receive her message and like ping it back. Could that be something that had happened there? Oh, interesting. I didn't think about that angle of this. Josh. Time I thought you were, I, well, the time travel angle. I, I was I was actually going to bring up when you when you said that that what about these pacifist aliens that Correct. are religiously yes. out there? They're yes. pacifists, right? Are they going to show? It feels like a weird thing to introduce them and never have them show up. It's often like a thing that happens in sci-fi shows. You have all seeing like, some, some overarching malevolent aliens that we have no hope of stopping. Then there's some other race of aliens that that kind of become our allies, some tenuous allies. Um, how would they end up back in time? Uh, that kind of time travel isn't real, sadly, but oh, also man. so is so many of these other things in the show. So I don't know. That's <laughs> the problem with the show. Like, 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 I don't know how far gone they're going to go. Is, is Superman going to going to going to circle the Earth the other way? Maybe uh, to make time go back in time. I don't know. But like, I, I mean, if you go by Star Trek rules that if, you know, you slingshot around the sun at warp, uh, you'll go back in time. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a, but but I but there is but it does connect a, a few things like. Will's going out in the space, or is that really going to be the last we hear of Will? No, they're going to do something with the brain and the rocket ship, but I have yeah. no idea what that's going to be. Is well, it going to be the uh, Chappelle that it's like the end of Independence Day, and we're gonna we're gonna give you a virus, we're gonna give it a cold, <laughs> uh, but instead of a computer virus, the cold that Will is going to bring to the Santi is that they are allergic to chili powder and corn packets. See, they did make a really big deal about him getting those that those corn packets and that chili powder because it was yeah, like he, a symbolic gesture from his friend. But at gets, the same time, they made such a big deal out of it. He gets rocketed off into space for people who didn't watch with dime bags of corn and chili powder. Mm -hmm. and, and like that's going to do something. Well, is it because he's off track? I, I Okay, 
you know, I'm not, I don't know anything about the science, but I know that he was being shot very quickly out into one direction and he was in a different direction. So they don't have a fail safe for what happens if he gets off course. He's now just in the abyss, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, unless these aliens go out of their way to go pick him up, because assuming that they were shooting him in the right direction, these aliens will now have to double back and go get him from a different place before he even matters. I don't really know if we're ever going to see Will again, because how? I mean, can can he can they drive this projectile? No. So it's just out there and, and it's not going to stop moving from what I understand about space. It's just going to keep going forever yeah. or get caught in somebody else's gravitational pull. He'll find yeah. another Sun T. He'll find another uh, group of aliens. We'll get a third uh, alien. A third body problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing scientifically drive or engineering wise drives me to that conclusion either, Chappelle. He's just going off in some direction. It's only narrative forces that are driving it towards anything. Uh, anything that 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 would that would drive it in that direction. Because otherwise, why is this all in the show? Unless I'm trying to say something deeper that is beyond me. I mean, I I honestly thought he's being shot to the star he bought. Uh, that I said yeah. that's the thing that, that, that like star is his destination. Is the know, star going to be right? like, ah, master, you've arrived, <laughs> Daddy. dad, <laughs> father? Yeah. It was like yeah, I didn't I, know that you. I, I if I had known, <laughs> you would <laughs> come to ask for the money. <laughs> Will the deadbeat <laughs> rocket dad? I don't know what they're planning on doing with this. I think that's one of the things. Again, I just from a watch from a, an excitement about the show standpoint, right? Like if it's a a lot of the show is centered around a mystery, which is which is compelling but a dangerous impulse for any show because if you, in terms of embracing it, because if the mystery solution is not fun, you feel kind of cheated the whole mm -hmm. time. And um, if the solution is, is great, then it, then it can be really rewarding. And what I've seen so far is that they will introduce wild concepts out of nowhere. So it's hard for me to like want to puzzle together what the answer is because mm -hmm. will they introduce uh, oh like we'll introduce cryogenic stasis in this episode like what it's like literally in that at beginning of that one episode cryogenic stasis is introduced so it can be used at the end of the episode and that's it it's it's those kinds of decisions that 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 are what worries me about getting really um, invested in trying to solve this mystery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we have the, the cryogenics, is there any world where we get a time jump? I'm assuming this is not the last we're going to see of the three body problem. I'm assuming there's a season two coming or something they, like that. Yeah. So they're talking about it, hasn't, as we're recording this anyway, it hasn't been renewed yet. I haven't seen that it went up in the charts on Netflix higher than two. And this is a very mm. expensive show. So that might not be a great sign. But maybe like the optics or they spent so much money on it and, you know, uh, it's got high profile with Benioff and Weiss. That I feel like they'll probably get a second season, but it's not guaranteed for sure. And uh, David and Dan uh, and Alexander Wu have talked about uh, there's some shit in book two that if we get to it, oh, man. Uh, so they're they're talking about it. And I think that they have said that they are pretty far along in the uh, not the scripting of season two but of like structuring out what the story of the second season would be right if there is another season then i will be happy and, yeah. and normally i'm kind of like i like to end my season on if this ended today right if netflix pulled the plug would it be a fine show would i recommend it to people and i was like i don't, I don't know if i would based on the ending so. of the yeah. season right but if if you're telling me there's more of this to come then i'm, I'm all in because I, I think there's another parallel that they have with the little video game, too, is that they would go into the video game and they would have an issue. You know, we need to find chaos, you know, a, a place where there's not chaotic, a time that's not chaotic. We're going to we're going to have a theory. You're going to put your hand on the ground. We'll fast forward to that. See if it works out. Yep. We'll cut, you know, and we'll go on from there. But they try it. And every time they try it, they're wrong. Every time they try it, there's chaos and the world ends. But the lady always shows up. The little AI woman shows up and she's always like, hey. You still get to go to level two. You still get to go to level three. They keep doing that. And so I'm thinking, okay, you know, so your brain spaceship plan didn't work. Who among us haven't come up with something mm -hmm. crazy like that, right? Yes. Who are we to judge? Yeah. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the party going. How many more of these schemes can we pull off, Christian? I mean, trillions of dollars went into this first one. Do you scale back and say, okay, let's try something cheaper? Or do you just keep throwing all the money at it? I would love to see more crazy plans that lead to nothing or but or gently move the needle toward what we will ultimately find maybe a solution. 
Yeah, I think also on top of that, the fact that the aliens are 400 years away, like you got time. Are, are we gonna? But are I think you were saying earlier, like, do we think maybe could we time jump? I kept thinking that like Liam Cunningham was gonna be like, and guess what? You're all going into cryostasis with me, and he was just gonna put his arms around the entire like uh, Beverly Hills high class and bring them to Beverly Hills College. Uh, but that didn't happen. I guess that could still happen in a season two. But I think our choices are like, the show is either going to be about how like spending trillions and gajillions of dollars will ultimately stop an alien invasion, or I think we have to go into the future and deal with it at some point, no? I, I don't see how we don't at some point get to 400 years in the future. It's shown at some point on the show, even if it's an epilogue for the show or something, it's just like, how do you tease all of this? And like, they solve it next year in the time in the timeline of the show. It's a, again, this is all narrative logic, but, um, but they put in the mechanism for cryogenic stasis. They put that mm -hmm. in there. Um, and I think that I would be happy to see a second season that really expands on the world building way that makes me feel more immersed in it and and again the high points of this show i was actually shouting in my in, on my for my tv from watching tv uh and it was it, it was exhilarating i want more of those things i want to feel like immersed in the mystery and the and the problem solving and i'll tell you what i would really like to see is is i i uh, you, you and you all familiar with the phrase uh competence porn uh, we know this <laughs> phrase. Um, the, the, no, the, but the, I can the, imagine what it might be. Yeah, I mean, this Ooh. is a common phrase. I didn't make it up, but like, it, but it's this. I think the show needs more of this. This is when you have a bunch of people that are smart and competent solving a problem. Yeah. Okay. It's like Star Trek. That's what yeah. Star Trek people call it, Star Trek. Um, some people uh, uh, say, you know, uh, good, good examples: The Martian, particularly the book The Martian, like this guy trying mm -hmm. to solve problems with the help of NASA. You have a plot where you have an ensemble of smart people and clever people who are good leaders like Wade coming up with plans. You and and uh really model it around it. Better Call Saul is another good example. When they're pulling mm -hmm. schemes Better Call Saul, oh, it's just so much fun to watch them work. Yes. And yeah, they need to do that more. And so that way, and, and so you root for those characters because you feel they're smart enough. And then when they have setbacks because the aliens out with them. Then you feel that then you feel the blow as well because you're with the characters. In another example, sort of like in horror movies, some of the most immersive horror movies are when the characters kind of figure out the premise of the evil of, of, the, of the evil creature, whether it's Freddy or something like that. It's like, oh, these are the rules. And they fight of, back. Of, yeah. They fight back cleverly. And then when he outwits them, you're like, oh, you're more immersed, right? And so uh, I they need to do that kind of thing. So that way I'm really in, involved. I yeah. want to love it. I want to love the show. Yeah. No, I agree. Cause you guys are very smart people. Uh, and you would like, if we see them in their elements, like we've yet to see Saul do anything remotely smart, but if we, <laughs> if we, if we saw, but we know he is very intelligent. And so right. if we ever got a scene of Saul doing science, you're like, Oh, okay. There's something there, you know, it's just, but now I don't know if we can ever see him do it now, because if he does it, then they're going to see it. So I don't know if we'll ever get this that. It's an issue. It's an issue. Yeah. But I do agree. I think that it, it is fun watching people um, when they know what they're talking about and, and then they, they can outline what's going to happen and then you can see it all go into play. I think um, maybe like oceans 11 or something like that. It's yeah. like, you have what people you who are they're experts, right? And they tell you, this is what's going to happen. And then when there's a foil, you see the expert mind go to work and how we fix it, you know? And then you get really invested in them work. I don't feel like I'm invested in these characters. I got, I got invested in the brain part. That, that part really got me the love story. I wasn't ready for that, but I do think that if you did use the cryo, you maybe jump ahead hundred years yeah and now or maybe even 70 years and now or 60 years and now you got um jen on her deathbed talking to her grandchild now about you know okay well here's the last little bit of wisdom i can give you while you gotta go fight the aliens you know what i'm saying if we're gonna do multiple seasons of this and if there's multiple books from what i can understand there's a bunch of them so i i would love for that to be something that we see later on because we saw yay win jay as a as a youth and then you know we've seen her We've seen her daughter come yeah. and go. We've seen her come and go. So I think you could keep that going with these uh, characters as well. Well, the three-body problem. It yeah. came. It went. Did it pose solutions to the problems, Christian? I don't know. 
I, I think that this possibility for a solution to at least my my uh, concerns with or frustration your with personal show, free body problem my, my personal free body problem I, I look I I think that again the potential is there I think the reason I'm I'm so emotional about it is because I I I could potentially see myself loving this show sure yeah yeah, um, yeah. this thing is really meant for you I think it, yeah it is and I didn't and I and, and so uh, I think that. Uh, and they they definitely have the potential to come up with these cool solutions. So I think that there is a solution to this free body problem, unlike the real one where there is no mathematical. Solution. There's no solution. Uh, there is a solution in that one. That maybe that's the metaphor. Maybe uh, metaphorically, uh, it doesn't quite align in that way. Yeah. But uh, I I I think that they could course correct and do something really fun in season two. If they jump ahead, and I want to basically I want to be blown away. By the yes. solution they come up with, and not not in a three hundred nukes in a row kind of way. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I I mean, it, it, it just I mean, it just in, in a sci-fi in a classic sci-fi way. That's what this is. It's, it's a science fiction show, and mm -hmm. um and that's and that normally has two components. One is you put people in a strange world, uh, and you see how they respond to it, and also you examine our current one. Right? Those, those are the two, two the two sides of that. I think. Frankly, you use a little bit more of both of those sides. Like they touched a little bit, of like in terms of examining big questions about our world. One of the first things they talk about in the in the present day is like, it's like, oh, do you believe in God? It's like, okay, are we doing God stuff? Are we doing mm -hmm. that? I mean, that's been explored in some shows. We didn't really approach that much thereafter, in my opinion. I mean, other than the point you the, you pointed out, uh, Chappelle, about uh, what what Ye Win Jay pointed out. So maybe it's gonna be a subtle running theme, but it's mm -hmm. not. I'm not sure yet. I, I, it's got to come back, but like, yeah. so you hit, yeah, hit both of those things, and you think you could have, a, you could have a great show on your hand that I would really love. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, anyone else got any three body problems that they want to try and answer now before we say good night? I think I would have liked to see more skepticism at this as well. You know, like I don't, I don't. I don't think I would be skeptical. I kind of let I let the smart people tell me things and I go with it normally. You know, I kind of keep one eye open on that kind of stuff. But I, I, I'm definitely like you. You've done the research. Yeah, I've, ch I've checked the credentials. I think I'll let you handle this. But we we've been in crisis situations in yeah. our present time. And like Christian said, we didn't even get like a day of people being like, really, aliens get out of town yeah, we ain't doing yeah, that you know yeah. trillions of dollars and we didn't see protesters being like bro f that problem that's not our problem or maybe use the trillions of dollars to get us the hell out of here you know right. what are we what are we really doing so i would love to see some more development around that and like that the might world even building bring up, yeah yeah but that might bring up the conversations about god as well you know some people are saying like you know maybe people start looking at this as a, an apocalypse of sorts and saying well if it's our time to go it's our time to go or maybe some people say well maybe this is a you know a celestial issue maybe these people who have this cult are going to expand i think they're all i think they're all dead now the cult people maybe mostly um, no, but the one the lady is still, still there guy. yeah yeah and, still there. and that's yeah and the assassin was there well she's playing a video game yeah. that's what we didn't talk about tatiana gets the headset the video game from the aliens but isn't but she's like one of the main like cult followers yeah but, but we've this never is how, seen like this is how she can like they're like well if you ever want to like just like you know if you're lonely if you want to chat you can put your helmet on and we can like send like a samurai lady to come and talk to you on our behalf is that what this for is just for communication i think so unless there's something so. else going on well because the I, thing I they, is I, yeah well, well i was gonna ask before you go christian is um We've seen her communicate, the the lady. We've seen her communicate without the headset thing. Um, I think they're on the plane and she's talking to, I think mean, she's talking to Wade or something. And she's like, oh, I can show you whatever I want to show you. You know, we can show you this. We can we can put this countdown in front of you. We can do everything. I was like, well, then why do we need the headset lady? What is she yeah. going to do? Yeah. I, that you you answered quite the point I was going to bring up, which I assume is just to make her the head of the cult now. I, the only thing mm. I can think of is that like, she was a bit disillusioned about the whole uh, the whole cult thing. Um, uh, but then again, she also got uh, the message in the TV, if I recall. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I mean, I, it's, it's sort of the win to win back her as like the. It's like buying like I'm so sorry. Here's a car. Yeah, we yeah. didn't mean to make you kill Ye Win Jae yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that I mean that's one of the more interesting aspects of the show. With again the game and part of the game of wits that should be happening between these two eight between these two sides is that is that the aliens are going to try to recruit people on their side, which they clearly keep doing, and that's yeah. that's that's part that's part of the interesting 
interesting puzzle. Uh, and, and Chappelle, you you also uh, brought up the fact that oh, I want more skepticism, and I totally yeah. agree. And the thing is, I went back and rewatched those episodes to look for signs of that, and with the closed captioning on. And they are lines, and it is talked about, but really briefly, and just in lines that Wade delivers. So what they really need to do is show it, not tell it. Again, it, it, that, I think that, that when they, if they really embrace the show, not tell philosophy, I know it's like screenwriting, you know, Christian pretends he knows anything about screenwriting. You know, go back <laughs> to research, Christian. But yeah. like, it's a, but, um, uh, but like that, that's, I think that's why that stuff doesn't stick because we should see people being like, ah, I think it's a bunch of bollocks. You know, you very you you have like one scene where where Saul kind of half heartedly says the eye in the sky is a deep fake, and mm-hmm. like, like or, or so the winking stars was a deep fake. That's it. Like and like that that's all you really get in terms of on screen sort of uh, material. So that's mm-hmm. I think where the show can be improved and it really hits you home where you feel you're you're in a world where things make sense. Yeah, yeah, immerse me in this. That's what immerse I want. Me, immerse mm-hmm. me. Three body problem. Uh, well. That's three body problem. Season one in the books would be would watch a season two. Uh, if if it ever uh, if it didn't get picked up and if it got canceled, I feel like uh, every single bit of knowledge that I currently possess about three body problem would disappear. Uh, yeah, like, I don't think I would think about it again. Uh, oh, you will never forget that boat. Don't lie to me. I was, um, yeah, the boat, the boat, I think, Josh. I think uh, after this podcast, I would say that the thing I'm going to think about even more is brain in a rocket. You know, if the show <laughs> doesn't come back, I will just be thinking like, what's going to happen? Forget the brain. What's going to happen to that chili powder? What's going to happen yeah. to the corn? Where is he going? Where will Brain Stark go next? So I hope to find out the answer to that. Uh, but uh, we will see if there is a season two. Uh, Christian, a delight to have you talking this show with us. Where can people find you? What do you got going on? Oh, so uh, you can you can find me uh, on the various socials at at C Hubicki or Chubicki, which is Chubicki. Chewbacca's young Chewbacca's younger brother, as we all know. C H U B I C K I on the various on the various socials, and uh, where I talk about robotics and occasionally talk about the TV show I was briefly on, uh, whatever strikes my fancy that day. Yeah, more than three body problems on on that show. <laughs> That's an body problem. problem for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. speaking of that show, uh, James Jones from uh, one of the, the from the new era of Survivor, uh, forty three, I think. Uh, he messaged us on Twitter. He messaged me on Twitter and said, "Don't mess this up. I love the books." And so, <laughs> hopefully, oh damn, yeah, okay, uh, yeah. Hopefully, he's not I, upset. We shall. I see. will. Uh, I am curious. Steal my DMs. What, what is the uh, the book reader's perspective on all this? I, I I would be very curious to to get that take. So. Uh, hope that we get a chance to to pick the brain of somebody who's who's read the book if we come back for a second season. Um, yeah. Okay, at Chubicki, uh Chappelle, at mm-hmm. Recap Kickback, what's up? Yeah, at Recap Kickback, uh, doing the same things I'm normally doing, talking about whatever I want and with the people that I can find. And so uh, Mari and I, we were joined by Tyrone last week to talk about uh, Freak Nick. The uh, Wildest Party Never Told. It was a great Hulu documentary. We had a good time talking about it on RecapKickback.com. Um, G and I are still covering Abbott Elementary on RecapKickback.com. And then uh, people can join the community. You know, uh, Go to RecapKickback.com slash Facebook to be a part of the group. Follow it on all social media platforms as well. And then you can catch me on uh, RHAP. Nothing but Netflix. Uh, Below Deck with Sasha. Club Condo. Talking about Survivor with Rob. So I'm here and there. And then, uh, of course, doing Deal or No Deal island exit interviews and covering deal or no deal island with jenny and rob on the hit or quit podcast feed so i got a lot going on josh christian would you go on deal or no deal island well i don't know if i go on new deal or no deal island but i did i i regret i i i got uh a case in the mail uh like rob sesternino did for you got one of, i got one of those kids so they, they they had a promotional thing I wish it was in my office right here. I could rig it out, but it's but it was this is this whole rigmarole. I got sent and I opened it up and the, it it started birds started chirping at me. It had all this like the sensor that it was this whole thing. Anyway, it's a promotion and inside it had some some goodies in it and I, I filmed it and I sent I sent the footage to Jenny Autumn to see if she would <laughs> laugh and I think I got some I, of, of my unboxing video of this promotional. It's very thing. knives so, out of the promotional yeah. theme. I feel I, like. I, I, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, Don, the, the deal or no deal, I mean, there's lots of questions as to whether or not there's any strategy to deal or no deal. I, I, I have gotten into arguments on Twitter uh, with people who claim that there's a strategy to case opening, for which I vehemently disagree. So um, uh, I'm not <laughs> right, sure. We're not getting Christian on any emergency episodes to break down uh, the strategy Dondi. to case opening on Dondi. Depends upon how much you want me to yell, uh, <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that, that, that'll be the answer to your question. Fair enough, me. fair enough. Uh, all right, I'm at Ron Howard, wherever you can find me on the internet. No longer on Post Show Recaps, as Post Show Recaps is coming to a close, but we do have a couple of additional podcasts coming out before the very end of the line. And stay subscribed to that feed uh, for whatever comes after Post Show Recaps. You will not want to miss it, and you won't miss it if you stay subscribed to that feed. And Chappelle, I'm going to hang out with you here on nothing Nothing but Netflix for a bit. Is that cool? Yeah, come kick it. Uh, right. I hear, you know, on Nothing But Netflix, normally, by the end of one episode, we start to plot on what we're going to mm. talk about next week and what's coming soon. And I hear you be having the scoop. So this is going to okay. be good. So uh, it's it's not a scoop, which I believe is a different show that's coming to Netflix mm -hmm. next week. Uh, I figured, like, okay, so we're talking about super serious, ostensibly three body problem. Um, but one of the things I love about uh, Netflix is there's so much stuff on there that like, I just see the thing pop up on my screen. I'm like, what are you? Mm -hmm. What is that? What is this? Someone made this. Uh, and the version of that that's coming out next week for me is it is called the magic prank show with Justin Willman. Christian, do you know who Justin Willman is? Was he was he brainshot in the space in the Netflix show or is that? Something <laughs> that, that... Oh, that's that's just Will. Yeah. His oh, just Will. Okay. Also, uh, it was a prank. Uh, magician and comedian Justin Willman, who has previously done Netflix's Magic for Humans. Any Magic for Humans takers? Doesn't seem. No, like I like it. Magic. Yeah. Yeah. They also have Magic for Human Spain for the people <laughs> who you know are Spanish okay. speakers. All right. Uh, well, according to Deadline.com, this show, uh, the magic prank show with Justin Willman, uh, it sees him using his extraordinary skills to pull off ambitious and hilarious pranks like you've never seen before. Well, Chappelle and I will be the judge of that. Exactly. Uh, when we turn on the magic prank show on nothing but Netflix next week, it, it arrives on April Fool's Day. No joke. Yeah. No joke. It seems, it seems to co combine two things. One thing I, I, I like and one thing I dislike. I like magic. I dislike pranks. So I, I think that might be in the wash for me. Okay. It feels like a, there, there was way back in the earliest days of reality TV, There, were all, I think on NBC, there was a show called Totally Hidden Extreme Magic, Oh, uh, which I believe was a prank show. And um, it, the acronym was THEM. And I watched the pilot of it. I don't think it survived past the pilot for, for completely understandable reasons. And their tagline, their catchphrase is that they would do some prank on some poor, unsuspecting people in a mall. And they're like, and people would freak out and they'll be like, and then the, then the magician would be like, I'm one of them. And people are like, well, what the hell are you talking about? Totally hidden extreme magic. And mm -hmm. they all have to pretend they know what they're talking about and go, yay. And then the show was canceled. Yeah. So um, I feel like, well, let me know if this is any good. Okay, the magic prank show with Justin Willman, is he a card-carrying member of them, is one of the oh. questions we hope to answer uh, when we tune in to the April Fool's Day launching the <laughs> magic prank show with Justin Willman. We'll come up next on Nothing But Netflix. Make sure you're subscribed. Nothing But Netflix, wherever you get your podcasts. We're on RHAP. We're on the YouTube for this episode. If you want to see more of us on video, let us know. We'd be down. We'd like to say hi. Uh, get into the messages, the comments, the things. Give us the thumbs ups, all of the stuff. And we will come to you with more Netflix shenanigans. Magic Prank Show coming your way next week. Until then, everybody, take care. Bye-bye. Peace.